You know, the wisest men that ever lived wrote, there's nothing new under the sun, and that includes recessions. Dr. Nasser Siddiqui joins me on Breakthrough today to share how in biblical times, God's people not only survived, but they thrived right in the middle of a downward cycle. I'm going to share how you can too. Today, I'm Rod Parsley. <laughs> this Breakthrough... And that assures you victory today. today. Friend, that is life beyond limits. This is the abundant life that a loving God desires to resurrect the circumstances of your everyday life to reflect His plan, to reflect His purpose. Hello, my dear friend. I hope you have yourself in a position to receive from the Lord today because I've been waiting, anticipating. I've really been looking forward to this program. I, if, I, if I was you, I think I'd reach over right now, hit that TiVo button, do it really quick. Maybe you've got an old fashioned recorder, hit that. At least get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible ready because God's got a word for you today. I really believe it. I believe it's gonna pierce right into the middle of your situation and you are never, ever, ever, ever going to get back to where you are right now. God's about to make a shift, a transition in your life of eternal significance right in the middle, if I might say, of a mess. You know, during the last economic peril, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt comforted the entire nation by saying, all we have to fear is fear itself. Well, there's so much wisdom in those words, aren't they? Just consider some of the latest trends in our country. In a recent survey, over half of the adults within 10 years of retirement age now say they've had to postpone their retirement. And the number of adults who believe they'll never, ever, ever get to retire has doubled from eight to 16%. It, it seems that these pollsters, you know, they have a poll for everything. They've even got one of all things about fear. It's called the CBOE volatility index. Now that's even hard for a preacher to get, not, not get his tongue tied around his eye too. What it, what it's really nicknamed the fear index. And it recently spiked the fear index at 15%. Well, what in the world's fueling that index? Well, of course, unemployment, divorce, children, concerns about job security, those stocks, those stacks and stacks and stacks of bills in your mailbox are just a few of the things that are assaulting hardworking Americans like you, causing us to carry in our countenance a dark cloud of oppression, making you more and more confused and disoriented with a multitude of fears and like grotesque images flashing and burning in your imagination there, drain you of peaceful and restful sleep. But here's some good gospel news. Here's some good Holy Ghost news for you today. Just as God has a plan to set your foot on the solid rock of salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ, he also today has a plan to place you on solid footing financially, free from the debilitating spirit of fear that's trying to wrap its icy tentacles around your life. We're gonna make it let go today. Stay with me. Dr. Nasser Siddiqui has dedicated his entire life to helping folks thrive economically. How? Using the principles of God's kingdom. He knows what it's like to have it all. He's my friend, we've talked a lot. He knows all too well also what it's like to lose it all. He's the founder of Wisdom Ministries over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Greatly sought after expert on biblical economics, helping folks all across this nation step into their covenant inheritance of authority and abundance. After all, that's been God's plan for you from the very beginning, way, way, way back there in the elegant Garden of Eden. Dr. Siddiqui, he's been on a mission recently, studying, pouring over scripture from Genesis to Revelation about every time a recession or a famine or a flood or a drought or pestilence came upon the earth. And today, I've invited him specifically 
to share with you what he's discovered that can help you, hear me now, thrive regardless of what the nightly news, the stock market, your boss or your banker has to say about it all. So get that Bible, get it open, get a pen, get a paper, tune your laptop in, let's go. We're about to share crucial keys with you today to help your life become recession proof. Join me, won't you, in welcoming Dr. Nasser Siddiqui to Breakthrough. What a blessing to have you, buddy. Absolutely. Man, I have been waiting, waiting, anticipating, trying to get you back here. You just all too busy <laughs> running all over the country, being such a blessing, and around the world, too. Amen. And Amen. thank God for it. You know, I believe we're in the middle of a supernatural now season. Amen. A now season. When God's doing an, uh, an absolutely sovereign work, restoring all the way back in the book of Genesis, that Adamic covenant in every one of our lives, he made it available in the beginning through our pristine parents over in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Here's what your Bible said. God blessed them. Now, he created the man, formed him with the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. God's three parts, man's three parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, spirit, soul, body. Here we go. God blessed them then, said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So he blessed their family right off. And then he goes on and says, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So he was saying to them, you have dominion. You have authority from the very beginning. And then the third thing he said was that he was going to give them the revelation of seed time and harvest so that they could live in a perpetual seed sowing season and receive a perpetual harvest. Absolutely. In fact, Pastor, if you see the very next verse, it says to equip Adam, uh -huh. for what he has just been given his mandate, the next verse says, and God gave him seed. Yes, he did. And then he said, now don't eat of the seed, right. eat of the fruit that comes from the seed. So having said to him, now go over, take over the whole earth, you're blessed, it's yeah. all yours, yeah. take the garden all over to equip you, he's given him seed. Now, what's interesting about this recession that's going on right now is that I, when I studied the Bible, God saw the end from the beginning. Doesn't he do that, though? So what part of this recession was a shock to God? None of it. Come on. None so of he it. knew it was coming before it ever showed up, sure he and did. he always made a way out. Now, when I studied from Genesis all the way to Revelations, Abraham, Isaac, uh, uh, Elijah, all the way to the Corinthians, Philippians, here's what I found out. That three things occurred. Number one, mm. God gave them the word. Now, it's up to us to make a decision. Do we listen to the media or do we listen to the word? The Bible, listen, listen, listen. The word can't help you. It's the word believed. That's it. That can help you. We carry this to church every Sunday. Sure. But it don't change nothing. Well, you could, you could, no. you could take that Bible. You could lay it on a cancer patient when you were dying with yep. uh, with shingles. Yep. Uh, you you could have laid a Bible on you. It wouldn't have made any difference. <laughs> no difference. No, it has to get in you. Yes. You have, here's the yeah, thing. Here's the thing, y'all. You have to choose. Amen. God so values freedom Amen. that he sets them in the midst of the garden. Right. He gives them everything they need. Yes. They've got their seed. Then he puts this tree in the middle of the garden and said, now don't eat that one. Right. Because he needs you to make a choice. Right. And when you make the proper choice, on. then you get released into that blessing. Amen. Absolutely. And so here's what I discovered. Every person that was blessed in a recession plague, pestilence, flood, whatever it was. Uh, God knew the flood was going to come. Didn't he? And guess what? He said to Noah, uh -huh. make thyself an ark. He didn't say pray to me. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> he didn't say I'm going to make the ark for you. My he said God. now you're going to have to do something if you want to prosper in this recession. Number one, he had to believe the word. Yeah. Number two, the instruction came right after the word. Okay. What was the instruction? Well, now this is how the ark should be made. If he had never obeyed the instruction, right. 
nothing would have happened. The third thing, I said, Lord, what was the seed part with Noah? He said, how do you think he funded the ark? He funded it. God didn't set money right. from heaven. That's right. So everything he had, he put into God's instruction. So here's what the Lord said to me. If we will believe the word, that number comes one, to me, number believe one, the believe the word. You're getting this? Word. Get, write it down. Number one, believe the word. Not just, not just hear the word. No, no. Believe, believe the, the word. word. Uh, number number two, two, Behind that comes an instruction. So number two is obey the instruction. Because the miracle of God is never manifested by what you do. Right. The miracle of God is manifested by what God does when you simply obey. obey. You're not responsible to perform a miracle. You're only responsible to begin a miracle with a seed. Right. Number three. Number three. Here comes number three. God doesn't give us stuff. He gives us instruction. Oh, say that again, doctor. Oh, say God. that again. God doesn't give us a car or a house. He oh, gives my. us an instruction. Oh, my. The Holy Spirit is our revealer. He is our guide. Go ahead. He will instruct you my. what to do. My. And as long as you disobey <laughs> that instruction, mm. nothing will happen. Now, we already know that in Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, seed time, time and harvest, harvest, day and night, winter yeah. and summer, it's all still yeah. here. Yeah. So what instruction will he give you? Here's the key. Not to sow a seed, but to sow the seed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not to sow a seed. Right. Sow the seed. The seed. Well, the, what, 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 what are you saying? Well, the difference is this. How long can we plant tomato seed right. and fast for corn? It oh don't my. happen. Okay. It I, ain't never I'm gonna show up. with you now. I'm tracking <laughs> with you. As long as we make the decision right. of what to sow, right. we're sowing a seed. Mm. As long as we obey, obey his instruction, we are now sowing the seed. I, I can't. Now, I know you want to go on because you're like me. You like to talk fast. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, that is a truth, my dear brother and sister. That is revelation. That is fresh manna for you. God is going to give you his word. He's going to give you an instruction. Listen to what Dr. Siddiqui just told you. It is, there's a difference between a seed yes. and the seed. A seed is what I make a decision to do. Correct. The seed is what God has spoken to me to do. Right. L let me just, let me just say this because this is, this is awesome. God never parted the Red Sea. Whoa, heresy, okay. heresy. No, 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 listen. He gave Moses an instruction. Right. Had he never picked the staff and had he never obeyed the instruction, My that breakthrough would have never occurred. Hmm, I lost my axe, Lord. Help me, help me. It's in the water. So God doesn't give him the axe. Right. God gives him an instruction. Pick up a stick and <laughs> throw it in the water. So he did, oh, God Almighty. So he did it for Noah. Right. Right. He didn't, he didn't build the ark for Noah. Right. He didn't even finance the ark for Noah. No, he didn't. He finance. gave Noah an instruction. instruction. I'm right. going to say a thing. The instruction you choose, it's your choice, to obey determines the future you create. He did the same thing, not only with Noah, but with Moses at the Red Correct. Sea. Correct. Not only with Moses, the armies were arrayed against Israel, mm -hmm. and God says, I, I, don't worry about the armies, here's my instruction, send out the worship team. No. Now, how ridiculous is this to yeah. send a worship team out to war? Yeah. But when they obeyed the instruction, the armies destroyed themselves. Because when a word from God is given, reason is never required. Right. It will rarely ever make sense to your natural Amen. mind. Why? Amen. If it made sense to your natural mind, you'd figured it out anyway. Come on. God's trying to get you to choose faith. Right. To choose faith. Because it doesn't make any sense. It's not according to natural things. Right. God deposits that in you to see if you're just crazy enough to take him at his word and believe him. Abram was 75 years old, mm. living in his daddy's house with his wife, and God says, I will bless you. Mm -hmm. 
Now, he had to make a decision to believe that word. Right. Number two, then God gives him an instruction. Here's the instruction. Go to Egypt. Wait a minute. I don't want to go to Egypt. Why? Because there's a famine in the land. There is a recession going on in Egypt. <laughs> Had he never gone to Egypt, he would have missed his point of transfer. My Ooh, let me God. say that one more time. Had he Glory to God. Had he never obeyed the instruction, he would have missed his point of transfer. He went into Egypt broke, left Egypt loaded. <laughs> he got his wealth in a famine. Yes, he did. By obeying the instruction. Oh, my God. And, and the instruction includes today mm -hmm. sowing the right seed. Right. What does that mean? Every harvest is hidden in a seed. Yes, it is. And so the question is, do we believe God's word that right. he wants to prosper us in this recession? Right. The answer is he saw it before uh, uh, the beginning of time. Of he knew he it was going to come. He made a did. way out. But how is that way out? When you obey his instruction and sow the right seed, not a seed, the right seed. So what seed did Abraham sow? I did a study on the Bible. I said, Lord, what did he sow? As soon as they got to Egypt, he said to his wife, tell him you're my sister. Jesus. Now, that wasn't a lie, because she really was his right. half-sister. Right. Then Pharaoh, because she was so beautiful, takes her into his uh, uh, harem. Right. Now, here's what happens. Isaac sowed a seed. That was the most precious thing he had right. was his wife. Sure. Now, now, watch what happens. Because he sowed the seed, right. Pharaoh... The one when the seed was sown pours into him all of the wealth that he needed. All the things that made him wealthy. Jesus. And at the same time, oh, this gets good now. Come on. At the same Come time, on. God shuts the womb of all the women in his harem. They can't get pregnant. Tells Pharaoh, until you give Sarah back. Back. Ah. Oh, come ah. on. Ah. So the precious seed sown there it is. was returned. Glory to God. He yeah. said he pleasures in the prosperity of his servants. He didn't say unless there's a recession. He said <laughs> <laughs> in all things we should prosper yes, and be sir. in health. Yes, he sir. never said if there's no recession. Nowhere here was there any mention of recession. God saw the end from the beginning and he made our way out. But how do we find that way out? How do we get to our point of transfer? We say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Here's the part that I missed. The transfer occurred in recession. Say that again. Whoa. In the the middle transfer occurred in recessions. Abraham went to Egypt in the middle of a recession and left loaded. Isaac went to Gerar, I'll talk about that, and right. left loaded in a recession. Joseph became wealthy in a recession. Every single one that I discovered in the Bible, it was in a recession. You ought to be throwing your hands up right now saying, what about me? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. You are ready. You throw your hands up right now, right there where you are. Say, I'm ready. Go ahead, doctor. So now, we look at it different now. When we see this recession, we don't get upset. We get excited. Yeah. This is our time for possession, Thank not God. recession. Hallelujah. Now we start to get the lands and the houses. I, I want to share with you about this. Believe the word and obey the instruction and sow the right seed. Well, this is a story of Isaac now. Okay. Isaac is in a recession. Right. And he is on his way to Egypt mm. because Egypt was prospering. Mm. But to get from his home to Egypt, mm. he had to go to the land of Gerar, okay. which was the land of the Philistines. Right. So on the way there, he stops and says hi to Oblimiak, the king of the Philistines, right. and decides that maybe, maybe God might have known this recession was coming. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe I ought to pray. The Bible says, call on me and I will <laughs> And so he prayed in Gerar, right. and this is the word the Lord appeared to him, and this is the word the Lord said to him. He said, number one, I will bless you. Number two, he said, I will give you mm. these lands. Now, wait a minute. What lands? Right. The lands of Gerar. Who owned the lands? The Philistines. His enemy. And he said, what, in the middle of a famine, he's going to give you God. the lands of your enemies? Most folks, but listen, Shoot. most folks would have gotten there to the land of the enemy. There where the hardness is. Come on. There when their stocks are falling or whatever the outward search of the news is talking. And that's where they'd have tuck tail, turned around, went home. Right. But right there is where God is proving himself God. And he continued. God hasn't finished. He says, and through your seed My will God. the blessing come. 
Now that God's given him this instruction. I'm going to give it to you, but it's coming through your seed. Come up. Now, the next thing that happens is that, that Isaac obeys the, the word. Right. He believes the word. Believed it. He didn't go to Egypt. Right. He stayed in Gareth. Right. Now, because he's in the right place, yeah. you would think that the blessing would come. But the blessing did not come. Right. Why? The, verse 8 says he was there a long time. Mm. So you can be in the right place uh, for a long time and struggle. Come on. Finally, it dawned on him, I forgot the second part, which was, through your seed, seed. will the blessing come. Ah. So now we get to verse 12. He believed God. He stayed in Gerea. Now he's going to obey, obey. the instruction. B-O, believe, mm. obey. Obey. And now he's going to S-S, sow <laughs> the seed. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Now, 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 here's what happened. I'm so, about to run right yeah, up in here in the studio. In this recession, here's what happened. Nobody's sowing. He's the only one sowing. Right. The Bible says he received in the same year. Now, now, now I, I just want to mention this for a quick second. They weren't supposed to receive in the same year. Okay. This was not Elohim talking, uh, right. the one that wrote the laws and gave the laws. Right. This was El Shaddai, the one that overrides every law and accelerates every law he wrote. My so all God. of a sudden, El Whoa. Shaddai can give him a hundredfold in the same year, <laughs> in the same month, in the same week. He accelerated it, oh, it. he accelerated the law. And that's why it says in the same year, he gave him a hundredfold. Now watch, 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 it gets better. Now, Isaac sowed, gets a harvest, gets a hundredfold. Here's what he does. He eats some, sows the rest, gets another hundredfold in the same, same year. year. And now his harvest is coming. The Philistines come to him and they say, you're the only one with any food because you're the only one that's sowing. Give us some food. Look at what he says. He says, what you got? My God. And they said, we got flocks. He right. said, I'll take them. Take he it. took the flocks, gave There's them the food. There's a transfer. Oh, come on. A little while later, they came back and they said, you're the only one with food because you're the only one that sold. He says, what you got? They said, we got some herds. He said, okay, I'll take your herds. There's a transfer. Oh, came back a little while later and said, hey, you're the only one with food. Uh, he said, what you got? They said, we got a truckload of servants. He said, good, I'll take them. <laughs> uh -huh. Finally, the king himself, Ablimiak, comes to Isaac and says, you're the only one sowing. You're the only one with a harvest. Uh, uh, give us some food. And guess what he says? What, what you, you got? got? <laughs> <laughs> and Obliviac says, I got all these lands. He said, great. I'll take them. All the wealth of the Philistines, their herds, their flocks, their servants, their lands, got transferred to Isaac in the middle, middle of, of a recession. recession. <laughs> how, how? Believe, obey, sow that seed. Friend, you can choose to uh, choose, I said, to either be stuck up in this recession or you can, you just determine. Come on. You're going to thrive right in the Go on now, you're going to show the enemy who's boss. Believe, obey, sow that seed. Learn how to prosper right in the middle of any recession. Don't forget that website, rodparsley.com. You get all the information you need about everything going on in this worldwide soul winning ministry. World Harvest Bible College, the Center for Moral Clarity, women's clinics all across the country. And you better not forget Miss Joni's journal. You know, we're going to have to give her her own whole website. She's getting more hits than I am. She sure does love chatting with you on there. I'll see you next time. And here, Breakthrough.